From ancient times to modern day, books have been a huge part of how people express emotions and a big reason why people show emotions as well. Especially in the last 20 or 30 years, whenever people have written well-received books, they've gotten a lot of fame and money. And rightfully so, it's a very rare talent to have. Or is it? People on the internet now want you to believe that you can now use AI to keep on churning content, especially books, and replace that skill gap that currently exists between a good author and a bad author. Today, I'm gonna to be putting this to the test and writing as many books as I can in one day using AI, specifically my best friend, the love of my life, Chad GPT. And then I'm gonna be taking the best book that it writes, writing my own version of that book, and asking the only author I know to compare the two and tell me which one he thinks is the better one. Now let's start churning that content absolutely churning it, just just churning it using ChatGPT. All right, I have ChatGPT open in front of me now and it's time to write the first book. So I'm just gonna ask it to give me 10 ideas for a book. And just like that, it's given me 10 ideas. There's a memoir, a coming of age story, historical fiction, but I like the fifth or ninth option. The fifth one is a dystopian novel. We love dystopia here. And the ninth one is a science fiction novel about a group of people who must save the world from an impending asteroid collision. Now I'm just gonna ask it to give me 10 chapters for the book that I just picked. So give me 10 chapters for the ninth option you suggested. Sure, here are 10 potential chapters for the book idea of a biography about a lesser known historical figure. Huh? I'm pretty sure option nine is about the science fiction novel. I'm just gonna rectify that and tell it what I'm talking about. Okay, all right, finally. So my apologies, here are the chapters, the discovery, the assembling, planning and preparation, training and testing, uh, the journey begins, obstacles and setbacks, tensions rise, race against time, the final showdown and the aftermath. Pretty good chapter so far. I'm just gonna get straight into this and I'm gonna ask it to write the first chapter. Write chapter one in, let's just do 500 words per chapter. All right, chapter one, the discovery. Scientists at the space agency had been monitoring the asteroid for weeks uh, and then it continues to write 500 words, I'm assuming. I don't know if this is exactly 500 or how they calculated at the back end, but I'm gonna assume this is 500 words or thereabouts, we don't have to be exact. Cool, now I'm just gonna write chapter two. Chapter two, assembling the team, the team of six astronauts chosen to save the world from impending doom uh, is a diverse group of individuals. Now she's going to write chapter two for me. So I'm gonna let it write chapter two and then I'm gonna write the rest of the eight chapters in the same way. All right, it has finished writing the book. And to be honest with you, I am not that impressed. It's basically a very stereotypical story about an astronaut team, how they meet, the challenges they overcome, and basically how they save the earth, which is, we've seen this story a million times. It does make sense because this is a model that's been trained on past data, but I, I expected something better. I expected something more unique, something more, something more well thought of, but this is okay for the first story. Now I'm just gonna jump in and write the other stories. I'm gonna see how many of these I can write before I get absolutely tired of ChatGPT and I want to never use it again. But for now, I'm just gonna keep on writing stories and see how far I can take this. All right, 10 stories in, we have nothing good in my opinion so far, except this story called The Office Follies, which is about this workplace that is going bankrupt and they have to come together, These the, the people that are working there, they have to come together to save it. It has some potential. And the good part about this is it, it is comedy. For example, this story is about how they come together and save the company. We have this girl that just joined called Rainbow and she goes by Rain or Bo. That's like an AI version of a joke. And then they go through a lot of things in the office. There's a prank war, there's a retreat. There's also a big presentation. There's office romances. There's a, the Office Olympics. So they basically copied The Office, which is what I'm noticing now. There's the tech crisis. There's also the company talent show. This is exactly like The Office. There's no creativity. There's the office party. Lastly, there's the save the company plan in which they all come together and then they save the company finally. I'm gonna try to write 10 more. I'm getting really tired, but I'm gonna push this to at least 20. Let's see. All right, so we are at story 21. And like I suspected, there is not a single good story in the other 11 that I just wrote. I'm gonna stick with The Office Follies. That is the story that the AI is written that is the best, I think, out of the 21 stories. And now I'm going to attempt to write my own version of this story and see how good of a writer I am. I think I have a few jokes up my sleeve, so let's see how this goes. So my story is about this intern, John, who joins his dream accounting company, uh, which happens to be the fifth largest in his city. Then he realizes that hiring him was just a joke to win the office prank war 
get it? In chapter two, the office prank war by the HR person, Liam. And in chapter three, John is just digesting what happened and he's approached by this other person who tells him that the company retreat is coming up and it's in three minutes, so he has to get ready. And the company retreat is to Mexico. So they all fly to Mexico on the CEO's jet. When they get there, John realizes that they're there for the big presentation, which is to none other than El Chapo, who is a Mexican cartel leader because the company is not doing so well. So they're trying to get the cartel's accounting business and the presentation goes well. But in chapter five, office romances, they realize that El Chapo is actually in love with Katie, the receptionist, and he'll only sign the contract if she says yes to him and marries him. But the HR person, Liam, is also in love with Katie and they're both having trouble because they both like Katie and Katie's also having trouble choosing. So she suggests that you have an office Olympics in chapter six. <laughs> so El Chapo's team versus Liam's team and see who wins and whoever wins is going to get Katie uh, and she's gonna say yes to them. And in chapter six, Liam's team is starting to warm up for the Olympics, but El Chapo brings out Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps, and Elliot Kipchoge, three of the best athletes on the planet. People think that El Chapo's won, right? Because of course he's won. He has three of the best athletes in the world, but no, he hasn't because he forgot that Katie does not like Michael Phelps because she does not like tall people in this story. So she says no to El Chapo. El Chapo is distraught. But this is 2023. So instead of being violent, he hacks their entire company. They can't use their computers, which is chapter seven, the tech crisis. So in chapter seven, they're trying to figure out how to get everything working again. So nothing's working. But then John, the main character, realizes that the password to El Chapo's hack is just Katie loves El Chapo one exclamation mark. He gets offered a job at the company, but the company doesn't have budget. They'll have to cut something and they suggest cutting the talent show. But the CEO wants John to win the talent show in order to win the job, which is chapter eight. And in chapter eight, he does so because he's the only one competing. I thought that was funny, but yeah, it, he's the only one competing. And in chapter nine, his first task is to throw an office party, uh, which he does, but he goes over budget. So instead of spending 20,000, he spends 20 million. Chapter 10 is save the company plan. And they're all brainstorming. They're like, what should we do? What should we not do? And then they realize maybe this is a sign and they're not supposed to save the company. Their final plan is to not save the company and to go chase their dreams in life, whatever that might look like to them. That is my story. And now it's time to take both of these stories to an author and find out how creative AI really is. The first question I have is, were you clearly able to tell what what piece was written by the AI and what piece was written by me? Yeah, there's some telltale signs. Like, I, I think I started with version two, which is the AI version. Again, this is my assumption. I could be off. The consistency was so off. They, they set something up and the next chapter is just like a different event altogether. And there, there are zero grammatical errors. And as a writer, I know that's never the case. Also, it was very inoffensive. So I, I feel like it's because of how LL, uh, like the AI models have been muted when it comes to comedy in general. So I think it was pretty obvious that version two was AI and version uh, one was yours. What do you think the AI did better? I think just in terms of the grammar uh, and punctuation, I think you missed a few full stops and periods and... Uh, that's just my creative expression. The AI would be good if you were writing kid, like children's stories because uh, kids don't really care about continuity or anything like that. They just, they just want to smile when something cool happens. Okay, and what do you think I did better than the AI? Well, yours was extremely funny. Last question I have is that, would you buy this book written by the AI? And if so, would you be satisfied uh, with your purchase if you bought it? Let's say you were reading it online on Kindle or on Amazon and it's not highly priced, but $15, $20. Yeah, uh, if I had to go to like somebody's birthday party and I didn't like them, I would totally buy a book to give this as a present. So that's a no, you wouldn't buy this in normal circumstances. Yeah, probably not. And so so I guess you don't think that AI is advanced enough right now to be a good writer. Well, I'll say it's good enough to pass off as 95% of writers in the market, but there's a reason why only 5% of them are actually good at what they do. Thank you for your time. Oh, can I sell my book actually? This is the best this is thing I've ever book. read. It says, it, says, it says it's Twilight. <laughs>